right? Uh, yes, and lots of texts coming in uh, about flat earth theories. Um, not yet finding actually anybody to agree. It has to be so. Well, looking at the text so far, uh, anybody to um, agree with our guest from uh, just before the news uh, at five o'clock, Mark Sargent, the author of Flat Earth Clues, uh, the keynote speaker at the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference, uh, or as Stephen Yelverton uh, calls him, a complete fruit loop. Um, it's got to, I've got to say, not a great deal of support for his theories on here. Um, a, a lot of people saying there's plenty of science uh, to back up the theory that the Earth is indeed a sphere. Look, we're going to talk about this from 6.30. Uh, we've got somebody on who genuinely believes that the Earth is flat. Uh, and a Professor Monica Grady as well, who you may know, um, because whenever we talk about fantastic space science, uh, she often comes on. Um, so we'll put them together and, and let them have a chat and, and see see if anybody's mind is changed by the end of that discussion. I have the feeling not, but, but keep the text coming in. Do 85058 at BBC Five Live. Uh, now, you're listening to Drive. For the rest of the programme, we're going to talk about this. On the 24th of December, 1968, the crew of the Apollo 8 mission took a photo that's now known as Earthrise. And to many people, this image of a beautiful blue sphere viewed from the moon's orbit shows us exactly what the Earth looks like from space. Not to everybody, though. Welcome to the world of the Flat Earther. Yes, they believe that this image is a fake, part of a worldwide conspiracy by space agencies, governments and scientists all over the globe. Flat Earthers get together to challenge the conspiracy that the Earth is round or spherical. Some even claim that NASA employees guard the edge of the world to prevent people falling off. Well, tonight we're going to look at why flat earthers believe what they do and what it is that's led them to reject this traditional scientific evidence. Over the weekend, hundreds gathered in North Carolina for the Flat Earth International Conference. Attendees believe that the shape of the earth is a disc instead of a sphere. Mark Sargent was the keynote speaker at the conference. We spoke to him earlier on Drive. All the world's a stage and you are on it right now. You're in... A planetarium, a terrarium, a snow globe, a building, for, for lack of a better term, a sports stadium. And that building was discovered by the United States and the Soviet Union in Antarctica, the outer boundaries of it, in around 1960, and they decided to keep it a secret. That we are in an enclosed system, that the Earth is not a globe at all. It is a flat stationary object that is covered by some sort of firmament, a dome. And they decided to you know, create the space program. The space race was an absolute sham. It's the longest running television series in the history of the world. Yeah, it's not just people in the States uh, who think that there's something in this as well. Vanessa is from Nottingham, started looking into flat earth theory about a year ago. Hello, Vanessa. Hi there. So from what you heard Mark Sargent say then, that, that all rings true with you? Yes, it does. Yes. It's uh, one of the guys that uh, kind of really got me into this this uh, new world of, uh, of the globe of the flat earth. Yeah. Did, did you believe before then that, that the earth was round, a ball, a sphere? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't question it. It's something that you just you, you brought up with it's it's there in your face constantly in media uh, in classrooms uh, that's it's a globe there is nothing to say that it's flat apart from being laughed at uh, throughout history because we fall off the edge yeah. so it's something that um that you, you just don't question you you accept so why did you suddenly start questioning that when other people don't um, I, I came across it as probably quite a lot of flat earthers um, on YouTube, uh, looking at something completely different. Uh, this video popped up and I thought, oh, this is interesting. I'll, I'll have a quick look. And some of the things started to make me question a little bit more, look a bit more into it. Um, and uh, it's kind of like going down the rabbit hole, if you like. You, you find one one path and you, you start questioning it and, uh, and it carries on. Yeah. Why do you think you did? The reason I ask that is because when Mark Sargent was on earlier, there were loads and loads of texts that came in immediately afterwards saying, what is he talking about? Absolute rubbish and <laughs> yeah. claptrap. And, and for most people, that's the immediate reaction. But, but you felt something a bit different. You, you carried on chasing it. Why do you think that is? I think for me, it was an intrinsic feeling that we are not moving. And if I hadn't been... Uh, taught the globe model if you like if it's something that I just landed I just came on earth what do I genuinely feel what do I see every day and I feel that we are on a flat plane we don't see any curvature from any distance that I I, I know of and I just feel that that, that, that rang true to me yeah. so that's what made me look further into it why, why, why are we uh, what could we be on a flat earth what does this mean 
And there were just some some more points that kind of came along and I thought, okay, this is a bit more interesting, look a bit more into this. I'm very open-minded anyway, but it was something that um, it's, it's it's an extremely strange topic in a way that most people like you say will just laugh at it and go oh my goodness what is this all about get your tinfoil hat on um and ignore it don't look into it but i did i wanted to see what would it what more what it was about yeah and, and why did you then i mean you talked it was interesting you said there about feeling that we're not moving mm. and the scientific explanation obviously that the earth is yeah. so very big and big, we're so very yeah. small which is why we can't see the curvature because we can't see that far yeah none of that none of that convinced you or it had done but it, that started to fall away yeah and it, it, it also started when they were giving us the the mathem- mathematics of the size of the globe and that we should be seeing a curve at uh, you know x amount of distance and uh, we, this is why the ships fall off the horizon etc but i think with technology nowadays we can see that actually it's more to do with perspective and that we've got uh, telephoto lenses that can go for miles and miles and miles and we shouldn't see what we should see if we were on a globe yeah. either the globe is a lot bigger than what we are being told or it for me it's flat and that's it it's kind of almost that simple for me that yeah do, do you know what fascinates me though it, it's interesting because you say that, that you haven't seen enough proof that the world is is a glow yeah but you've also seen no proof that it's flat either but, yeah. but you choose to believe one over the other i do and it's it, again it comes down to my personal feeling um what i'm feeling when i'm reading and, and researching into this is that it, it's the globe just doesn't ring true. There's so many things that doesn't make sense to me. The, like the what? Horizon, Give me a couple. The horizon are always at eye level, no matter how high you go. It just doesn't happen on a pla- on a globe. But then the argument is, well, it's so big that we wouldn't see it. Okay, so if it's so big, we can't see it. Why the the equations that we are being told say that we should be be able to see it? It's it's contradicting itself. Um, Do you really the, think that? Because yeah. because physics say that you know it's a globe; it curves away from us, so you would never be able to see all of it because it it curves away. But it, it, as you go higher into the atmosphere or stratosphere, or even you like, it, you just can't see it. It's, it. We've we've had weather balloons go yeah. up so x amount high. But they show a curvature, and astronauts have been up there and seen it, and they say. But it's do round they show well. a curvature, or is it the lenses that they use? There's another argument that they're all they always use these GoPro lenses, and when they okay. don't, um, it actually does show a flat horizon. Well, what would you say to somebody to an astronaut? I mean, take Tim Peake for example. He yeah. went up in the International Space Station, and he went round the Earth, and and he. He saw it with his own eyes. You were telling me he was wrong. Yeah, I, I, all I would say is all I just want is a picture of the whole Earth from the space station instead of a quarter of it, instead of a little bit of it, instead of something out of the window. It's There's just no absolute proof for me that that's, it is what it is, what we're being told anyway. Yeah, who do, you, who do you think's perpetuating that conspiracy theory then? Uh, global agencies and large, uh, NASA is just a business at the end of the day, I think, and uh, they've got their own agenda. Um, we, I'm not. I'm used to big corporations. They're telling a few porkies here and there. Um, we don't trust our government totally, and I think that again is it. It starts to ring a little bit. Well, I'll look into this a little bit more. Why should I believe everything that they say? Just it's because an interesting they say. thing. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing to choose, though, isn't it? Of, of yeah. all the the myths that they might want to perpetuate, the shape of the Earth would seem like a. A relatively minor thing to bother yourself. Do you know what I mean? Though there, there yeah. are so many other things that they could they could choose to influence you on. Why do you think they would choose this? There's a bigger picture behind it. Um, I, don't know, I couldn't give you the ins and outs of it, but there's there's certain reasons why they why they would do this. Um, that their daily budget is astronomical, and really, what do we get from it? We get a few. Uh, computer generated images some blinded by science of what we're doing there's just that certain things that i would like to say to say to if anything to shut flat earthers up uh, there's a picture of the earth from a distance the whole earth but it would still be a picture though wouldn't it or a, 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 a genuine photograph not an interpretation not a data stream interpreted and uh, turned into a graphic yeah for would, you then you'd, you'd probably have to take it yourself to believe that it was real wouldn't you yeah, i'd like to say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then i could 100 percent say but uh, again this is open to yeah. argument from both sides because 
Well, yeah. why do you why do you believe it? I mean, because it was interesting in that answer there. You said I, I I couldn't give you the ins and outs, but I think this this and this. So it's it's almost like what you believe isn't proven either. So why yeah. do you believe it so strongly when there's so much about it? And you said there, there's so much detail that you you it's don't huge. know or it's, don't understand. Yeah, it's um it's an absolutely huge topic, and I've been going through it for for, for a year, and I still know very little compared to people like Mike Mark Sargent and and the main the big hitters of the flat Earth community. Um, they know their stuff and and, uh, it's up to me to follow my own beliefs my own research really to to find out what I truly believe and that's what I'd say to other people don't believe everything I say or they say look into it yourself and Mm. and see how you feel about it do you do you talk to your friends and family about this (laughs) no (laughs) why not (laughs) it's because the topic is so out there and uh, you 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 say say to somebody you believe the earth is flat they'll they'll look at you like a strange person but they, these are your friends and it, yes it is but it's it's a topic i'd love to be able to talk about it but i think it, it's just no nobody does talk about it I've, no. I, I was gobsmacked to hear that the radio wanted to actually engage in a conversation about it because it's it's one of those th- topics that produces a lot of vitriol from people they don't they just laugh at you and scorn so why put yourself into that position because if you, you know, firmly it, believe that yeah. then then why aren't you saying let you know come on friends family whoever you are i really believe this firmly and strongly challenge me on it and i'll tell you why that's my view i think it's it's such a belief that's been ingrained in us from such a young age um and we really don't know the truths of that. We were just told we live on a globe, and this is what we this is what we should experience, and we don't question it. And so, thirty, forty years later down the line, when somebody comes along and says, "Well, they believe the Earth is is flat," they'll just look at you, you know, gone out and say, <laughs> "You must be crazy." But um, there are there are so many interesting aspects to the history of the flat Earth and how it came about and how we came to the globe model and when people actually start looking into that, it might be a bit more interesting to people the history side of it. Yeah, because it's with- a relatively new new topic the the the, the globe itself. Yeah, so stay with us, Vanessa, because yeah. we're going to talk about the science side of this as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, Let's bring in, shall we, Monica Grady, uh, leading British space scientist, professor of planetary and space science at the Open University. Hello, Monica. Hello, hi. Uh, Michael Marshalls was listening to that as well, project director of the Good Thinking Society, a pro-science charity, also produces a podcast for the Merseyside Skeptic Society. Hello, Michael. Hi, hi, thanks for having me. Uh, While we mentioned podcasts, actually, Freddie Flintoff, of all people, has been talking about this. He heard the interview we did earlier uh, about Flat Earth, and he was talking about it with Robbie Savage and Matthew Side on the latest episode of the podcast at the award winning podcast, Flintoff Savage and the Ping Pong Guy. So uh, that episode's called Loving the Alien. Uh, It's available now from all your usual podcast providers, so you can can have a listen to that. You can go to the Five Live website for more details. Monica, let's. Hello. Let's. there, there are a lot of texts coming into this programme right now, most of them being mm. unkind about Vanessa and her, and her thought processes. <laughs> so first of all, you, you try and debunk her, her, her theory in, in a minute, can you? What, what's the scientific argument, apart from the evidence of our own eyes when we see a picture of the Earth as it is, or as we believe it to be, what, what is the scientific argument to why it's not flat? Well, there's all the, I mean, the uh, night and day, the different... Um, uh, hemispheres of the earth the way the earth um orbits on uh, rotates on its axis if it were a flat object it we wouldn't have night and day in the way that we do uh, but for me if it is a conspiracy it's one heck of a conspiracy and it involves about a quarter of the population of um the world you know if you've got a whole load of nasa scientists as mark Sargent said guarding the edge in antarctica i mean i've been to antarctica and i haven't seen any nasa scientists there guarding guarding the edge of oh, but did you get to the edge monica i got to the south pole <laughs> you know and it's just like yeah, it's it's like where else can you go after that i, I mean the you don't see the whole of the globe from the International Space Station. It's not high enough. You have to go higher. The images taken by the Apollo astronauts are, uh, you know, are, are proof. There is there is no doubt in my mind at all that yeah. we live on a, a sphere. Gravitationally, uh, this is the shape that something would actually go to when it was formed. Um, you don't get any bodies becoming a disc um, in the way or a snow globe or whatever it is that, that, that Mark was talking about. 
that is just not a, a physical property of the atoms and the molecules which which build a planet. All of it which doesn't work. All of which follows a logic that we're all taught from from day one, Monica. What what do you yeah. make of those like Vanessa and Mark Sargent, who we interviewed earlier, who do believe the Earth is flat? Well, I mean, what do you say to them? Do you find it difficult not to be condescending? Um. How can I say yes without being condescending? <laughs> I, I, I think they're misguided. Um, it's almost, I think, uh, getting to be religious in the, the, the fervency with which Vanessa was talking. Um, and I just think there is so much, there is so much scientific evidence and, and logic that it is illogical not to not to believe it uh, and yet you know the, 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 it's, it's a really interesting experiment for me this on the program because we're getting so many texts in and so many of them are angry from angry people saying why is vanessa even on the program why is mark Sargent on the program but actually what people like vanessa and mark do is they challenge the conventional way of thinking and people i find when we do things on this program tend to tend to feel threatened when their their way of thinking mm. is, is is threatened and michael i mean we could be having the same argument could we not about religion when people start asking for for valid proof etc etc and belief patterns that marshal our lives sorry to no pun intended actually <laughs> michael uh, but 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 Let's let's just talk about flat Earth specifically mm. for a moment because you've spoken to flat earthers, haven't you, for your podcast? Yes, so I, I, I interviewed Mark Sargent, in fact. Oh yeah. well, there we go. And I interviewed him myself an hour or so ago, and it, it was in, it was interesting to say the least. And, and and certainly he was convinced, if if not convincing to many people. So what did you make of flat earthers? Well, I think it's a, a fascinating um, study in the nature of belief um, because. It, it is something that is more resurgent now than it has been for, for many, many years. I think Flat Earth was um, relatively, had a, a small level of prominence uh, up until the turn of the 20th century. Uh, and then the numbers dropped off into something like double figures in terms of the number of people who believed it because we went into space and people actually got evidence. Um, we're now in a position where uh, people are, feel that uh, we're, we're divorced enough from that evidence that they can start to, to question it. And, and I think what was really interesting in, in how Vanessa was talking was she was saying it didn't feel right. This didn't feel like uh, like uh, my version of the world. It didn't feel like we're moving. And I think part of the issue here is we're seeing that um, it's it's almost the inevitable conclusion of promoting the idea that everyone's entitled to an opinion, that all opinions are valid, that there are two sides to every debate. But when it comes to facts, there fundamentally aren't two sides of a debate. There's reality and there is fantasy. And unfortunately, uh, the flat earth of belief is fascinating and as uh, wonderful and as, as interesting as it uh, may be, it simply doesn't hold up to uh, any measure of reality and because the counter argument is so easily provable is what you're saying well, I'd say so, but also I think one of the, the main issues you'll see is that um, uh, you look at the proponents of the flat earth uh, uh, belief, when they, the, 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 the way they will look to defend their belief is to say, well, I think this is wrong, so I'm now going to attack the other side. I'm going to attack the round earth, and here's all the reasons I can find flaws in the round earth theory. But what they fundamentally don't do is to say, I believe the world is flat. How do I prove myself wrong? And if I can't prove myself wrong, maybe I'm right. And that latter thing, that is the very definition of science. You come up with a theory and you test how to prove your theory wrong. And if you can't prove it wrong, maybe it's right. So it's a, a, a failure of falsification. It's a, a lack of willingness to say, this is what I feel. But what if what I feel is wrong? How do I make sure that uh, that I'm right by trying to prove myself wrong as hard as I can? And I think that's the the step that's fundamentally missing in not just this belief, but we flat Earth is almost a, a very good um, analogy or a very good uh, model to use to study how people uh, react and believe in all sorts of well, other situations. And that's what I mean about a wider context here, because I know I've brought religion into this, but of course there are many people who react the same way to a discussion about religion, saying it's all it's all make believe, for example. But the latest twi the latest text that's just dropped in here saying it says i hope the existence of the bbc is threatened if you broadcast any more of this nonsense and so that's what i mean about the level of anger because because one i mean even if even if the evidence is 100 percent and we all we, most people believe that is the case it, it, it is a it is a surprising reaction to having a belief system question well that's it? true but we shouldn't um, we shouldn't shy away from having conversations but we also fundamentally shouldn't present the flat earth theory as being 
equal in any way to reality. And this is uh, kind of the issue we see with all sorts of uh, debates. We see um, the injection of false balance, which leads people to think, well, my opinion and how I feel is just as valid as, you know, the the experience and uh, the expertise of space scientists. So, 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 go on, Monica. That's quite right. What, what, Sorry, what, what, what would you say then, Monica? Because again, there are people who are saying you should not talk about flat Earth for twenty minutes on national radio. So, uh, should should is the argument so outlandish that it should just be shut down completely before 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 it's even even given birth? If you see what I mean. I think it's something which, if people want to explore, they're free to explore. I I think um, that. It's quite right to uh, voice these sorts of opinions, to explore wider issues, to use a different framework, to look at a a question and to come at things from a different angle. Um, You know, we could have had another 25 minutes on Brexit. You know, would that have improved your listening figures? I don't know. I mean, this is the sort of this is the sort of conversation which is it's really interesting to have. Um, I would never ever want to put anything like this on the same level as you know newton or uh, um kepler or any of the the great physicists who who deduced the equations and the way the mechanics of the solar system worked mm. it's the it's the same sort of um it would be the same as equ- equating creationism with Darwinian evolution. You just yeah. you just don't do it. It's wrong. No, no I think but- so. And I think it's the again. This is the um, conclusion of elevating feeling to the same level as fact. And yeah, I think that's, that's something that's we're seeing point. in all I, sorts I of other elements a, of society. A quick final word from Vanessa. I mean, Vanessa, as, as Tony was reflecting there, a lot of people listening to you, a lot of people really angry with what they've heard you say. Yeah. It is. It, it does evoke that kind of reaction, which is but hence why I don't really talk about it. It's something I keep to myself. Um, and yes, it is a part of a feeling. Uh, which that's that's my own personal thing but I would just say to people just research it and look into it and you know people like Monica are great they can give a balanced opinion of the facts and figures and the science behind things yeah. she told you um, that the earth was a was a globe though well that's you, you don't a, yeah, believe that I, I don't personally believe that because of the the things that I've researched and read and and followed and, and understood from my own research but, yeah but it's important know, in uh, in doing your own research not to throw out all of uh, science oh, and no, the, the, no. the uh, huge Huge amounts of expertise of yeah. you know mathematicians and uh, and physics experts, Absolutely. and then to accept what you find in a YouTube video without questioning that to the same level of rigorous scrutiny. Yeah. No, I agree with that. It's uh, something that you kind of really do need to look into, and uh, you know, just have an open mind, and that's that's all I can say. Uh, Vanessa, yeah. thank you, uh, Vanessa from Nottingham, uh, flat Earth theorist. Uh, you heard from Monica Grady as well, leading British space scientist, a professor of planetary and space sciences. Uh, Michael Marshall as well, who's project director of the good thinking society thank you for all of your texts that really got you going and uh, yeah monica mentioned creation creation creationism, creationism. versus darwinism I'm, I'm a good job we can't debate that because i can't say it uh, maybe that's for tomorrow in the meantime here's five lives